What is going on, everybody? Welcome back, or welcome for the first time. It's FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon, MLB DFS video, Sunday, August 6th edition. We are back, ready to rock and roll. The video is probably going to be longer than normal. We're going to break everything down. When I say everything, we're going to try something new today. We're going to go through all the games except for this one because this isn't on the slate. This is that weird Peacock Sunday baseball game. We're going to start with this one, and we are going to make our way down. We're going to look at all of the available pitching. There are, As of right now, I believe there are a couple of pitchers who are still undetermined, which that's, that's just the problem. Um, we're going to see it every day. But we're actually going to break down. We're going to break it down and look at the pitcher's and the batters in the entire lineup on the team that may make an impact. We're going to go into advanced metrics into it, so a little bit more than we've done in the past. We're very excited about it. If it's something that's helpful, let us know. If you like it, come back. If you're new to the channel, anytime a video gets at least 50 likes and you leave a comment you have a, and you're a subscriber, you have a chance to be chosen on the random uh, YouTube random comment picker to win a free week. Anytime a video gets at least 100 likes, we do the exact same thing for a free month. Anytime a video gets 125 likes, we have we do the exact same thing. You have a chance to win a free year. And if a video gets 150 likes, someone will win a lifetime pass. So if we can get to 150 likes on this video, I think we can rock and roll today. That being said, go to fantasyteamadvisors.com. FTA plus you can sign up $24.99 for a month or you can use the promo code NFL VIP to sign up for a year pass $199 normally get $100 off get it for $99 that includes MLB MMA NFL PGA going to be NASCAR going to put that in there as well if you haven't already check out our NASCAR content on the website and let me know if you guys did MMA so we did video yesterday or we did a video uh, we posted it Friday uh, for the MMA bout. If you guys liked it, we will go into it even more uh, moving forward. So that being said, let's see who the winner is going to be. We pick the video. We put it in here. If you left a comment on yesterday's video, good luck. Let's see who the winner is. The winner is Ronnie Babb. I believe you're a new, at least a new commenter. I believe, if I'm wrong, let me know. If you see this video, like it, let me know that you saw it. And then two ways to contact us, either on our support, dfshelp1 at gmail.com. That's dfshelp1 at gmail.com. Or you can always hit us up on Twitter slash X at advisors underscore team. We're over there. We'll get you set up for a for your free pass. So congratulations, Ronnie. Come back tomorrow. If this video gets 50 likes, you have a chance to win again and again and again. People can win all of the time. So congratulations to Ronnie. Give a round of applause to Ronnie. We are going to break this down. So hopefully it's very informative for you. Also, another way to help the channel out, like the videos, share the videos, leave comments to hit the algorithm, hitting the ads. I know it might not be fun, but it is a big way to help us out. Another way to do it, if you guys go ahead and uh, subscribe, obviously, to FTA+, Plus, that checks out. If you check the article out down below, that also checks out We because we have ads in the article. All of those help the channel out. We've also had people donate. The Cash App is down below. And I actually had a couple of people email us just to say thank you uh, for the content, which was awesome. You guys don't have to do that. But, yeah, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to check everything out here. We're going to look at New York Mets versus Baltimore, and we're going to work our way down. So in this matchup currently, uh, this does not take into effect any weather concerns, postponements, delays, obviously stuff like that. If you find it helpful, hit the like button. Also, if you are new to the channel, I would love to know how you found our channel, whether or not it was the YouTube homepage, up next, someone shared it. Always awesome to hear new stories. Also, towards the end of the video, we are going to go over our top 10 batters that we like so far. And if you've been here before, you know that we have been using AI and simulations and we simulate games 10,000 times during the day. And then we post 
those into the top BVP, so not BVP, but top plays here, uh, MLB DFS player projections. Those are going to be all of the bats that we like, but we're going to go over 10 of them in this one. If you guys liked it, let us know. We've been working on it. Um, I've ran it 2,000 times already, so we're going to show the initial ones. Now, those take into effect ballpark factors, the matchups, BVP, uh, weather. They, they take all the factors you can think about in DFS and put it into the AI simulation. So if you guys do find it helpful, definitely let us know, and we'll get on from there. So we got Jose Quintana versus Kyle Bradish. Not much going on. Uh, Quintana making his going to be his how many starts? Is this his third start of the year? This will be his fourth start of the year. So looking at that, it's been very up and down. I mean, he, sh he had a good matchup on paper against Kansas City at Kansas City. That's a big factor that we absolutely love. And he didn't do too much. Went 6.2 innings, but three earned runs, only two strikeouts. His strikeouts have been low. Now he's facing a Baltimore team. He obviously hasn't faced them before. Looking at this, we are looking at um, his away game. Basically, this is his fourth start. It's it's 50-50 where he is home or away. So not much going on there, but I honestly am not looking forward. I, I'm not going to be using Jose Quintana, um, probably using the Baltimore Bats. And we can kind of just look into this. And like I said, we're going to look into the numbers, uh, some of the Bats. These are the advanced metrics against, so I have it split out against left-handed and right-handed. So these are the batters that have had success in the uh, on this team currently against left-handed bats. So if you want to go with average, Mountcastle, Adley Rushman, Jorge Mateo um, has had success. Austin Hayes, look in there. Cedric Mullins is not in there. Uh, Santander is a, uh, a switch hitter. So we could be looking at this here. If you want to go by, well, I don't know why that's there. That needs to be changed. Um, but let me change that real quick. Okay, perfect. We are back. So if you want to go, you know, these are versus left-handed pitching. If you want to go by isolated power, you can go isolated power. Mountcastle, he's hit. You can see a bunch of green for Mountcastle against a lefty. You can see that. he he He's checking a ton of boxes here. Rushman, another switch hitter, checking a ton of boxes with green. There's a lot of green to like here. I am definitely looking at some of these batters here. If you want to go plate appearances, see who's had the most. Walk rates are high. Rushman, Santander, they're at the top here. Austin Hayes. If I'm taking bats in this one, it'd be Rushman, Santander, Mountcastle. Um, just depending. Uh, other ones, possibly Gunnar Henderson. Um, maybe Jorge Mateo here. So that is the breakdown of the Baltimore bats. And if this is something you guys enjoy and this is very informative for you, let us know because I would absolutely love to make this an everyday occurrence. This is going to be longer videos than you're used to, uh, but hopefully it helps you out. And if it does help you out, that is why we're here. Then we got Kyle Bradish here. We kind of look at Kyle Bradish if we could find him. There he is. Coming in 8,500. Game logs coming off a pretty good game against Toronto, not so good against Philly up and down here against Tampa Bay and then Miami and New York. Splits-wise, hasn't faced the Mets this year. Uh, is way better at home, 239 at home. Um, four less starts, less earned runs, less home runs, less walks. Does have less strikeouts, but again, he has four more starts on the road. At a glance, um, last 10 games, it's averaging 20.9. His last game, 24.8. On the year, 16.1. So he does have a plus matchup against a Mets team that... They just, for whatever reason, they're not hitting well um, at all. So then we jump into here. You want to check out the Mets bats against right-handed pitching. We will look at that. We will see who's had success this year so far. So Tommy Pham actually got traded. He is out. He is not there. We got uh, Alvarez here. There's not a ton here. This is what I'm telling you. When you see this and you don't see a ton of green, that means obviously take the pitcher. They've had success in the past. Um, looking at this, if you want to go plate appearances, uh, this is just this year. Lindor, um, he would be a good option against a right-hander. If you are taking some Mets bats, Lindor would be one I'd be looking at. 
I'd be interested in Nimmo, uh, Jeff McNeil, um, Starlin Marte possibly, but that's basically it. Um, I'm probably not going to be on the Mets at all. I will be on Kyle Bradish at 8500 um, who is $200 less than he was against Toronto. I will take Kyle Bradish in this one, and I will take the Baltimore Bats in this one as well. So I'm avoiding Quintana. I'm avoiding the Mets Bats. I'm all in on Kyle Bradish and Baltimore Bats. Next game, Toronto Blue Jays at the Red Sox. You got Chris Bassett versus to be announced. Let's see if anyone is on Boston here yet. Um, again, Nick Pavetta, it really just doesn't matter. Um, this is one we can't really discuss because I don't, he's not in, um, Boston. They're starting to go with openers as well. We can look at Chris Pavetta or, uh, Chris Pavetta, uh, Chris Bassett here. Look at Bassett game logs kind of similar here. Um, seven K six K five, five, four. You can kind of look at this. He's out. Now, the problem is he's in Boston. This ballpark does love to give up some runs, and we can check that out. Actually, we do have that right here. For If you go to MLB tab on Fantasy Team Advisors, you go to ballpark stat ratings. You can look at this. This is free to everybody. So go check this out. Um, these are all free. This is a free tool for you. Um, once it loads, we you can kind of see how Fenway has given up runs. Um, so just kind of looking at this, depending on how you want. Now, these are all from Saturday, obviously. And you can come down here and you can make it bigger. So it opens up into one picture, which is even better for you. And then you're able to uh, build around there and um, just depending. So you see Fenway, 566 total runs. They rank fourth overall. Home runs, 2.3 in average per game, 124, uh, 16 is what they're ranked for this. So you can definitely go check this out for all the ballparks if that does help you out. But looking at this, Chris Bassett, we'll look at his splits. Away games, he gives up a ton of home runs on the road. And then you couple that with Boston, you couple that with Fenway. I'm leaning more towards probably, and you can see his ERA on, on the road, twice as worse, um, more than twice as worse. He's averaging less fantasy points per game here. Um, and that is what I'm looking at. So I don't know who Boston's going to be pitching right now. Probably just looking at bats in this game. So we will bring up the bats and see who we like in this game here. So looking at the stats, if you want to take... So we don't know who's going to be pitching. So we can't look at uh, Toronto in, over like just looking at it. But we will definitely look at Toronto bats together. But let's look at Boston bats first. Against right-handed pitching at home, you're looking at lefties here. Um, do pretty well. Jaron Duran, a lot of green that we could be looking at. Tristan Casas, kind of in, in the same boat, more less red, more green and yellow, which is fantastic. Uh, Yoshida a little bit here, does strike out a little bit more. Um, but you could look at this. Yoshida makes a good option. Devers makes a good option here. Kike Hernandez, obviously not on the team anymore. Turner, I believe, is day to day. This is just something to look at. So if I'm looking at Boston bats against at home against Chris Bassett, I'm looking at these right here. These five. These are the ones I'm looking at. Ver Verdugo and Yoshida do strike out uh, considerably. Kind of less walks here, um, but you can see the averages. Jaron Duran's batting 321 against righties. Yoshida's batting 314. It gets better with OBP slugging. You've got Jaron Duran. I mean, he is checking a ton of boxes right here. He might be my number one Boston bat in this lineup. He might be one of my top bats overall on the slate. Then we can look at Toronto bats against righties and lefties just to see, because um, we don't really know who it's going to be. But we will look at Toronto, and we will see. So, Against left-handed bats, let's just see the most amount of plate appearances. You can see this. Um, Springer, Whit Merrifield, Matt Chapman. Uh, Chapman against lefties is amazing. Bo Bichette is out right now. Vlad is kind of in the middle. If we look at righties, you can see they've faced a ton more righties. Guerrero almost has 400 plate appearances against righties this year. Not a ton of green. Bichette's out. George Springer, Chapman, Varsho, Whit Merrifield, Brandon Belt, a a cheaper option you'd be looking at those so as of now we don't really know who it's going to be but we will for sure have that on the website 
once everything is posted and once we know who's pitching. So I'm probably not taking either pitcher in this ballpark. I just don't trust it the way the ball flies out of here. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Bassett gives up three, four, five home runs in this game. And we don't know for Boston. Next game, Royals at the Phillies. You got Zach Grinke, which we always want to target Grinke um, against. So we're looking at Phillies bats. Uh, Citizens Bank ballpark right here is the second best uh, ballpark for uh, offense with the weather and all the factors today so far versus Taiwan Walker. So you can see there's a reason Grinky's all the way down here. We look at Grinky at a glance. Didn't do too bad in his last start. Five innings, one earned run, three strikeouts. Not getting a ton of strikeouts. 12.9 fantasy points per game. We're looking at that. That was against the Mets. Um, they ended up winning that game against the Mets, but still not enough. He is not a viable option for you, not even in tournaments. You're not going to get anything out of him, especially against this Philly team. Hasn't faced them this year. On the on the road, he is better on the road. Or he is way worse on the road. You want to target him on the road. In this ballpark, I'm all over the Phillies here. Then if we look at Taiwan Walker, you look at Walker here, game log, you know, ish, not too bad, but giving up some earned runs there and some home runs. Splits, he has a good matchup against Kansas City. They've they had a good win streak. And they've been beating teams that they shouldn't, and it just blows my mind. Um, home games, though, he's better at home. If I'm taking a pitcher in this one, it would be Taiwan Walker against Kansas City. And then if we want to take uh, the Phillies bats here, again, I'm just going to assume Kyle Schwarber's at the very top. What players have had success against right-handed pitchers? Um, Trey Turner's is still expensive, is not doing well. Um, I, that's one I would avoid. Uh, players that I would look at, Kyle Schwarber. Um, it's kind of crazy, though. Schwarber has a 173 batting average against righties this year. Uh, not that's That actually blows my mind. And this is why I like you know, showing this. Somehow he's better against lefties, lefty and lefty matchup, but I would still take Schwarber. Um, he's got less green than I thought he'd have, but I'm still looking at him. So if I'm taking bats in this one, I'm looking at Castellanos. I'm looking at Schwarber. Um, I'm looking at Brandon Marsh and Bryce Harper. Pretty much anyone in this lineup I really like against uh, how bad um, how bad that Grinky is and has been all year. So looking at that, that is what I would look at. I'm all in on a Philly stack. They're probably going to be my number one stack of the day. Would not surprise me. So I don't want anything to do with the Royals bats. I don't want anything to do with Zach Greinke. I'm all in on the Phillies bats. And I think Taiwan Walker, I don't know. This isn't like the best slate for pitching. We've had way better slates for pitching than this. We do have some really good pitching out there, but then it's just kind of, middling after that uh walker probably sp2 for me um yeah 7500 sp2 or just strictly tournaments it just depends so that's what i'd look at i'm going away from grinky i'm stacking as many people i can against grinky and i'm looking at taiwan walker for tournaments astros at the yankees really don't know this has actually been not too bad of a a series so far i really thought the uh, Astros would come in and just completely um, destroy the Yankees and sweep them. And that's not what we got. We've actually got a good matchup here. Um, you got Jose Urquidy versus Carlos Rodon. Rodon, his, his, the problem with Rodon, he's a really good pitcher when he stays healthy. The problem is he was hurt to start the season, didn't have a spring training really, didn't really ramp up much. He's kind of in that mindset where you go through spring training and then a couple of starts into the season is when you start to get going. Uh, where He's not there yet for whatever reason. So looking at that, um, that is definitely something to look at. Uh, Rodon against Houston, he's actually had success in his career against Houston. He hasn't looked the best. As you can see, I think he's got five starts under his belt, averaging 8.5 fantasy points per game. Not good. So, Urquity is coming off the IL. Let's see. 
So we'll look at this. Um, hasn't pitched since April 30th. So he's probably in a, let's see, is he in a short leash? So Urquidy, he surrendered five earned runs on nine hits and five innings in AAA. Um, but he had shoulder uh, inflammation. So whether or not that's going to play into a factor, whether or not, and he hasn't pitched in a very long time. So we look at this. Uh, yeah. So these numbers are going to be very, very skewed. Um, I would be looking at uh, probably looking at these Yankees bats. So Urquidy there, um, probably not liking much there. Just off the IL, got lit up in AAA. Now he's, I know the Yankees team's like a AAA team, but AAA did just light him up. So then you look at Rodon, who's been very up and down. This will be his sixth start of the year. Coming off only four innings against Tampa Bay, four hits, four earned runs, two home runs. Did walk four. He's walking a ton this year so far and five strikeouts. So we had the strikeouts, but everything else came to 6.2. Probably not using him. Um, he has been better at home. But the two on the road, he did get lit up. So his numbers are skewed quite as well um, as the other ones. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead, look at the Yankees bats against righties. And we'll go from there and see who's had success, who should be in the lineup, and all of that jazz. Now, today is the day where catchers usually, Sundays are where catchers rest. So this is something to look at. But looking at this, um, Harrison Bader against righties hasn't really done well. Uh, everything is down. The numbers would suggest not to take him. Uh, in this lineup, though, if you are taking him, I'd kind of maybe take a little bit of exposure. Look at him there. So plate appearances against righties. We'll just go with plate appearances. Glaber striking out 12%, which is actually this should be. Um, that's good. This should be opposite. That should be good here. Um, give me one second. Let me finish this. Okay, so if we look at this, you can see that IKF would be a good option here. Glaber Torres, righties, Rizzo's out, Volpe up and down. You can see more red, more orange than green and yellow, so he might not be a good option. You can see LeMayhew kind of coming on recently. We'll see. Stanton would not be surprised if Stanton sits. Um, really have no idea. I don't know if you've seen the video, but he was on second. And there was a hit to with two outs in yesterday's game. There was a hit to uh, center and then went ahead and he jogged and got thrown out by a mile. Had he ran, would have been safe easily. Um, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he'll sit. I think Judge will play. Um, so absolutely love Judge. You can see, obviously being hurt for almost two months, his numbers are more green, but he hits pretty much anybody. Wouldn't be surprised if he homers in this game if he starts. There's a lot to like. Jake Bowers is probably starting first base. I don't mind him. If Oswaldo Cabrera gets in the game, lefty on righty matchup, he's a switch hitter as well. So looking at this, I'm probably targeting the Yankees against Urquidy. I'm looking at Torres. I'm looking at LeMayhew, maybe a little bit of Volpe. Um, Harrison Bader, Jake Bowers, Oswaldo Cabrera, IKF. Almost anyone in this lineup uh, I would be looking at a little bit here. Um, Warvet as catcher, possibly, uh, but he's not on this list because he does. he's 100 total uh, at-bats in the majors. So that would be the list that I'm looking at here. Then if you want to take the uh, – we're looking at Houston against Rodon and lefties. Just plate appearance if you want to look. Kyle Tucker, lefty on lefty matchup, actually hits lefties quite well um, in this ballpark. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets another home run. I mean, all of his numbers are fantastic here. Bregman is kind of struggling this year. Um, walks a lot against uh, lefties, and Rodon walks a lot. More orange and red than you'd like. Uh, but then you look at Jordan, lefty on lefties, got a bunch of green there. Dubon's got a bunch of green there. Chaz McCormick has a bunch of green, what we're looking at. So... I'd probably use, I wouldn't be opposed to use almost anyone in this lineup. Um, I think there could be a lot of runs scored in this game. I don't think the starting pitching is going to dominate at all. I think we're going to see runs, the over-under, depending on when it comes out, could be, you know, eight and a half, nine and a half, would not surprise me in the least if that's what happens. So that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Um, I'm probably going to avoid both of these pitchers in Rodon, and Urquidy, and I'm going with the bats in this game. Next game, Nationals at the Reds. We don't know who's pitching. I'm not going to go over it just because we don't know if this is actually going to be 
Um, could be Lion Richardson. Never faced anyone before. He's a right-handed pitcher. Um, could be him, but we just don't know. So we're not going to be able to cover all of the games, um, but I would still probably be looking at the Reds' bats in this one. I would not be looking at any pitching in this ballpark. This is the number one ballpark for offense, especially with the uh, the way the weather's going in this game with the wind blowing out. Absolutely love this. So we will look at the Reds' bats um, against a righty, and that's who I would be focusing on. So we've had success almost all year taking a pitcher against or Reds bats against a pitcher. We look at this. Fraley just got put on the IL uh, mid-afternoon on Saturday, I think, or late Friday. Um, but if you want to look who's had success against righties, you can look at this. India, he is also hurt. So that leaves Spencer Steer, who's got more yellow and green than orange and red, which we like. TJ Friedel, I don't mind. Will Benson is a cheaper option on there. Ellie De La Cruz. Uh, I don't mind Ellie De La Cruz. Uh, Joey Votto on there as well. A lot of these have to have, I believe this takes into effect, let's see. I want to say this takes into effect players that have at least, where is it? At least 50 plate appearances this year against left-handed pitching. So that's kind of like the borderline where we want a minimum of 50 plate appearances. So Joey Votto doesn't even register in this one, but I would take Joey Votto here as well for the Reds bats. So next game, Rays at the Tigers. You got Tyler Glasnow versus Matt Manning. Glasnow really hasn't faced them before this year. Uh, Manning, 22 plate appearances, not much going on there. So we look at Glasnow. He's the most expensive pitcher on the slate, but he has a fantastic matchup. Game logs, fantastic. I mean, great against the Yankees, seven innings, eight Ks. Against Miami, seven innings, eight Ks. Against Baltimore, seven innings, nine Ks. You're getting the durability out of him that you need, and he has a fantastic matchup. Hasn't faced him this year. He's on the road in Detroit. He's actually better on the road. He's probably my number one pitcher on this slate. Um, I know he's expensive, but there's a reason he's expensive. And then we got Matt Manning here. Looking at Manning, splits-wise, um, Home games, 461. He is worse at home. Hasn't faced Tampa Bay this year. Game logs, nothing that we like. I would not use Matt Manning. I would not use Matt Manning at all. And we can see, we can use Tampa Bay bats against righties. Just depending on what you want to look at. Just go overall. Franco here, uh, not too bad. Not a ton of green, but not too bad. A Rosarena I would use. Yandy Diaz I would use. He's got a ton of green against righties. Um, Paredes. Luke Rayley. I don't mind a little bit. Is stri- Luke Rayley is striking out a ton, though. Uh, Rose- Rosarena striking out a ton as well. Um, that's kind of what I'd look at. Franco. A Rosarena. Diaz. Paredes. Uh, maybe a little bit of... Yeah, maybe a little bit of Harold Ramirez, but that's probably it. That's probably what I'm looking at for those bats. And then I don't want any, um, I mean, we could look at Detroit bats if you guys feel like that's going to be a thing. You, If you want to look at Detroit because it could be uh, um, a contrarian play, I mean, I wouldn't use Miggy at all. P- Torkelson. Not a ton of green. He's got a bunch of orange and red, so I would probably avoid him. Um, Riley Green has been on fire, so I would use Riley Green. Matt Veerling, I don't mind. Uh, Kerry Carpenter is okay for tournaments. Hossey is okay. Not really. He's actually really bad. Um, Yeah, if I'm using any, I might look at uh, McKinstry, Green, and Veerling. That's probably it. But I will be all over, all over... Uh, glass now and not Matt Manning. Next game, Arizona Diamondbacks at the Twins. You got Zach Gallon versus Dallas Keuchel. Um, boy, Dallas Keuchel has struggled his past two years. Hasn't pitched this year. Struggled, got released by so many teams since leaving the Astros. He's been terrible. Um, I don't know if he's on a leash. I mean, in AAA, 
in 32 innings with six starts this year, 113 ERA, 28 strikeouts. The problem is that's just since June, which is okay. But now he's facing actual teams that can hit. I do not trust Dallas Keuchel at all. Um, 5,500, sure, if you want to throw him in a tournament, okay. But his numbers, uh, the past few years, his ERAs skyrocketed. He's gotten hit hard. He was a flamethrower, and you know, the older you get, obviously, the less you can actually flamethrow, and you get hit hard. And it, it just, he hit a wall. Whatever that wall was, he hit it as fast as humanly possible. So I would be all over Arizona bats. If you want to look at the bats against lefties that we could be looking at, here they are. Uh, plate, we'll just go by plate appearance just to see. Cattell Marte. I struggled lately as of late, but I, he would be one that I'd look at. Um, he's a switch hitter. Corbin Carroll's a lefty on lefty matchup, but he still has some good numbers against lefties. Um, Christian Walker. I would use Christian Walker. Guriel Jr. I would use. Uh, possibly Moreno if he plays. I would use. Got some great 75 plate appearances. So not a ton, but he is up there. Um, maybe Jake McCarthy. It just depends. There's not a ton that I like there. Um, but if I'm using any bats, it would probably be these top four here if they're playing. And then if you want to look at Zach Gallen against Minnesota. Game logs. He's been kind of down lately, actually. He hasn't been doing too well. He's been giving up some earned runs here. Kind of coming back down to earth. Um, he's on the road. On the road, he is worse on the road. He's averaging twice as less amount of uh, fantasy points on the road versus at home, which kind of stinks what we're looking at. So let's take a look at the Minnesota Twins bats against righties now gallon is expensive he's been kind of doo-doo lately so we'll just look at this we'll look at plate appearances correa he just hasn't done a ton um 335 plate appearances here only walking nine percent striking out 27 percent of the time um at 215 batting average against him that's not good uh gallo's not a good option either buxton's on the il kepler could be an option julian could be an option Solano's an option. That's kind of it. Um, that's what we're looking at. Uh, yeah, that's that's not not too good, honestly. Maybe in tournaments take Minnesota against Zach Gallon, but they just haven't really shown us a ton. So pro I don't know if I'll have anything to do with Gallon, especially at that. I think I'd pay, rather pay four hundred dollars more and. Uh, go with glass now than gallon and that's probably where I'm at in this situation so I'd go with uh, Arizona bats and I don't think I'd go with either pitching here I know I'm not going with Dallas Keuchel Pirates of the Brewers is next Johan Oviedo versus Brandon Woodruff Woodruff coming off the IL hasn't pitched he's pinched twice this year uh, hasn't pitched since April gonna be on with a shoulder problem um, I'm guessing so they say he might be able to approach 85 to 90 pitches. Whether I mean, he has a good matchup here. Whether or not he can or not, I don't know. These numbers are skewed. He's made two starts on the year. So these numbers don't mean anything. So that's a righty there. Then you got o Johan Oviedo, which you can find here against Milwaukee. Splits-wise, away games, he is worse away. Gives up more home runs on the road, more walks, does have a couple more, a few more strikeouts, Less hits, one less hit uh, allowed, one less earned run. So he's not been good at home nor away. He's been about the same, not averaging a ton, 6,900. Probably don't want anything to do with pitching in this game um, at all. So we'll look at this. We can look at both. Let's take a look at both. Um, we'll go Pittsburgh bats first against righties. Uh, if you're looking here. Kutch has an OBP of 394. Uh, if I'm taking bats in this one, I'm looking at Kutch, Sawinski, Carlos Santana, Brian Reynolds. Those would be the bats that I look at for Pittsburgh if you're not going with Woodruff. And then if you want to go with Milwaukee bats against Oviedo, uh, Brian Anderson's back off the IL. Um, 
I don't mind him. He's going to be a cheaper option. I think he'll go lower owned because people won't be thinking about him. Christian Yelich has been on fire. He absolutely murders right-handed uh, pitching this year. 405 OBP, 312 batting average, a 365 BABIP, um, approaching 1,000 uh, OPS and 532 slugging. I'm all in on Christian Yelich. Might be one of my top plays of the day. So I'd be looking at Yelich, Anderson, uh A little bit of William Contreras or Joey Weimer in this game. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not focusing on pitching in either one. If you want to go with Woodruff because he's expected to go 90-ish uh, pitches and he has a plus matchup against Pittsburgh, I don't mind. But I think Pittsburgh could be a sneaky stack against Woodruff fresh off the IL in this one. Next game, Rockies at the Cardinals. you got Austin Gomber versus To Be Announced. So Austin Gomber here. Um, I don't know if he's actually going to be pitching. So that's nothing to look at. Um, doesn't have velocity. Opposing batters hitting 290 against him this year. If that's the case, I would be looking at uh, Colorado. But I, we don't know if they're going to be uh, pitching him. So we can only really go off Austin Gomber. And you can see that he's all the way down here. So game logs wise, uh, not the best. Did have a good game against the a good ish game against the Yankees. Splits wise though, he I mean he's better on the road, but he still has a 405 ERA here. Um, don't think I'd be looking at Austin Gomber. I'd be looking at St. Louis bats against a lefty. Um, probably not looking at Colorado bats now because we just don't know. But let's look at St. Louis bats who've had success against lefties. I'm just guessing it's Arenado, Goldie. Um, and we'll go from there. But we can look. So as you see, um, Wilson Contreras, if he starts, I like him. Arenado. These are actually ones I really like these four right here. I don't mind Dylan Carlson. Paul DeYoung got traded. Lars Newtbar at the top, I don't mind. But, you know, not very much ISO power here. Um, but, yeah, if I'm looking at the Cardinals as a stack, I'm probably looking at Goldie, Edmund, um, Arenado. And Contreras in this one. Maybe look at Gorman. He just has the bare minimum here at 52, uh, but he's got good peripherals other than that. So I would look at Goldie, Edmund, Arenado, Wilson Contreras, and Nolan Gorman for my St. Louis bats in this matchup against Austin Gomber. And we just don't know what's going to go on right here. So kind of wait and see um, from there to see who's in there. But yeah, that's what I would definitely be looking at. Braves at the Cubs. You got Charlie Morton versus Justin Steele. Morton, this game. I mean, we're very we're back and forth in this in this series. Thought it'd be one sided, but then we kind of saw the Cubs went on a run, scored a ton of runs, and then Friday they didn't score any, and then I think Saturday's game they put up five or something in the first inning with home runs. This is a ballpark that has some great options, and the wind is a big thing. So, looking at Charlie Morton. It's going to be towards the top. They're right next to each other. Only $200 difference. So game logs, not too bad against the Angels, but then kind of iffy there. Splits-wise, he's away, 332. I don't know if I want anything to do with Charlie Morton here. I don't trust him enough, especially at 9900 I just can't trust him. Hasn't faced the Cubs this year, but I just don't trust him. And then we got Justin Steele. Game logs, kind of two okay games. Um, went six innings when they put up 20 runs here. Um, gave up four in runs, but it really didn't matter because they had so many runs. St. Louis, an okay game. St. Louis before that, a good game. Splits-wise, he hasn't faced Atlanta this year. Um, home games, he's he's a little bit worse at home. Like I said, I think I would rather be looking at the offense in this, in this one. So you've got the Braves offense against left-handers. which we will look at right here. Look at the Braves and get rid of St. Louis. So the Braves bats that have had success against lefties, um, I mean, Acuna, I mean, obviously, he gets on, he hits a home run for you. If he gets on, he also uh, steals bases. So those mean more fantasy points. So absolutely love both of these. Austin Riley I love. Marcelo Zuna in this ballpark I love. Sean Murphy, Orlando Arcia I don't mind. I will have exposure, probably different Brave stacks here. 
probably looking at different brave stacks against Justin Steele. Don't trust Justin Steele enough, not striking out a ton. And as you can see, I mean, Matt Olson does strike out a ton. Other than that, it's kind of low here. Um, I would rather take the offense in this one against Justin Steele. And then if you want to look at Cubs bats, we can look at Cubs bats here against Charlie Morton, who's had success against righties. Ian Happ has some good numbers here. Overall, Chris Morrell has some good numbers, a little less on the at-bats, uh, walking a little bit less, is striking out a ton, so he's kind of hit or miss there. Cody Bellinger is due for a big home run. Um, I would be looking at, I would not be surprised if we see 10-plus runs in this game, and I want to take full advantage of this. I'm looking at Happ. I'm looking at Horner. Dansby Swanson has back-to-back -back games with home runs against his former team. you got to use that narrative. Chris Morrell, I don't mind. Bellinger. There's a lot to like. I'm probably sticking with these these bats right here that I would take against Charlie Morton. Um, obviously, those are six players, so if you need to make multiple lineups with the Cubs, that's completely fine. I don't want anything to do with this pitching in this one. Marlins at the Rangers. You got Sandy Alcantara versus Andrew Haney. Alcantara has not looked as good this season as previous seasons. He is coming off a good game, couple of good games in a row against Philly and Tampa Bay, which are really good teams. You know what you're going to get out of him. You're going to get 95 plus pitches out of this dude. Depending on if he comes through, we'll see. Hasn't faced Texas this year. Home games. Better at home. He is worse on the road. Texas is a really good team. I'm probably avoiding Alcantara altogether there. Then we look at Andrew Haney. What are we going to get out of Andrew Haney? Game logs coming off a fantastic game against the White Sox. Six innings, 11 Ks. Fantastic. Hasn't faced Miami this year. Looking at this, um, home games, he's worse at home. This leads me to believe, let's check out the offenses. I don't want a ton to do with the... The pitching in this one like i said this this slate i i'm not a huge fan of this slate like pitching wise not a ton of big pitchers that i enjoy so the miami bats that have had success or just looking at their numbers against lefties jorge soler give me all of him brian de la cruz i don't mind fortez if he plays maybe garrett cooper usually or no garrett cooper's gone um gene segura's gone yeah, I'm probably looking at these these three and Nick Fortes. That's probably what I'm looking at there. And then uh, Texas Bats against right-handed pitching in Alcantara. Could be looking at Texas Bats here. Like I said, this is going to be a long video. Hopefully this is easy for you guys. But yeah, I mean, Corey Seager, yes, 100% all in on him. Love me some Nate Lowe here. Travis Jankowski is going to be a cheaper option for you. His ISO is really low, though, so we can kind of look at that. Uh, Adolis Garcia, I don't mind. Tavares, Josh Young, I don't mind. Simeon's up in the air. So I would definitely look at these three for sure. And maybe Marcus Simeon. So Seager, Low, Jankowski, and Marcus Simeon um, is who I'd play in this game. I am not taking the pitching in this game. Especially in Texas, with the the heat, the ball is going to fly out of there big time. Next game, Mariners at the Angels. You got Bryce Miller versus Chase Silseth. So we go down here because they're going to be down here probably, maybe not. Let's see, where is it? Am I am I missing it? What is going on? Oh, this is the afternoon. Give me a second. That's dumb. It's not on the main slate. All right. Found them. For whatever reason, they were here. Found it. That's gone. Now we've got this. So you got Bryce Miller going against the Angels. Game logs, not, not the best. Um, hasn't faced the Angels this year. Uh, game logs, five innings, five. I mean, you're looking at about five innings out of him. I don't really like this, this late, right? Or this, not a big fan of these games. Uh, pitching wise, I wouldn't look at that. So you got a righty and Bryce Miller that I wouldn't take against the angels. And then Sil Seth here, um, game logs, couple of starts in a row that he's gone or he's gone five innings. He's scheduled to start here. Um, 
you know, making two starts because uh, Griffin Canning was removed and still Seth made the start. So looking at this, um, home games 386. Usually the the problem is these are out of the bullpen, so these are absolutely they're the numbers aren't going to look good. Um, but we can look at the numbers. So um, both of these are right-handed pitchers, so we can take a look. Let's just take a look both at the same time. Go Seattle and the Angels here. Go to just this. Um, Seattle bats against righties. I mean, not a ton to go here. A um, lot of orange, a lot of green, uh, or orange and red. Uh, honestly, this might, you can't even play this on the main slate. If you're playing an all day slate, okay. Uh, but batters that I would use for Seattle, maybe Julio, maybe these three right here, probably it. Um, but that's, that's maybe in Crawford would use Crawford and Cal Raleigh if he starts angels bats against Bryce Miller. I mean, look, Otani's numbers are ridiculous. Uh, 431 OBP, 332 batting average against right-handed pitchers, 732 slugging, 1.1 OPS. Obviously, we know what we're getting out of. Um, we know exactly what we're getting out of Otani. He's going to be probably the most expensive bat that you use today. Um, other ones than that, I mean, Taylor Ward basically died on the field. Uh, Mike Trout is out. Yeah, I don't like. I'm not going to lie. I don't like this little two game slate here probably not going to be using this um these two pitchers we don't even know who's on san francisco or the athletics don't know if it's actually going to be these um yeah alex woods out of the bullpen can't trust him not looking at this um and then medina pitched last on sunday i don't know this one i'm just going to avoid this slate so we're just going to avoid this game because we really don't know. It's not on the main slate either. And then this game here is the Sunday night ESPN baseball game, which I'm pretty sure no one wants to tune in to watch Lance Lynn versus Rich Hill. If you want to see the bats because you're trying to play the um, – you're trying to play the the showdown, we can look at this. So let's take a look at San Diego bats against right-handed pitching – and what they look like and what it what you could be expecting um juan soto i mean look at these numbers fantastic numbers against righties lefty on righty i'd be looking at him he's probably my captain spot um kim i don't mind he is he's okay here against righties grisham i don't mind either i would look at cronenworth not the best so I might avoid him, but I might use him. Again, it's showdown. you got to get a little bit crazy and creative in a showdown. But I think Juan Soto is your number one captain. I think he's going to be super expensive. But, I mean, just look at these numbers. 1.04 OPS, 594 slugging, 446 OBP, 293 batting average, 1.3 walks per strikeouts against righties. I'm all in on Juan Soto here. And then you got the lefty bats, the Do or the Dodgers bats against the lefty in Rich Hill. I still don't know how Rich Hill <laughs> is, is pitching. Um, but, yeah, let's look at the, the bats here real quick for the Dodgers. Against lefties, I'd be looking at Mookie Betts. He's got a ton of green here, 1.10. I mean, even Freeman against the lefty, 346 against lefties. This is exactly what we're looking at. People on paper – you might look and be like, oh, man, I hate this. It's lefty on lefty. I'm, I'm off of him because people like to see lefty on righties and stuff like that. Freeman splits against lefties. Amazing. 346 here. I'm taking Freeman, Mookie Betts, um, probably avoiding Max Muncy. He's got a low batting average here against them. J.D. Martinez. Um, I wouldn't mind J.D. Martinez. Chris Taylor is striking out a ton, though. That is definitely a problem. That should be red and not green. So that needed to be updated. But if I'm looking at Dodgers bats against Rich Hill, I'm looking at Freeman, Mookie Betts, J.D. Martinez, Chris Taylor, and Will Smith in this one. And that's it. That's the breakdown. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, hit that like button. I know this is a long video. It's actually not as long as I thought it would be uh, with all the new added bats and stuff like that. But it is a very comprehensive breakdown. And hopefully it's something that you enjoyed.
If you did, hit the like button. If you want to go check out the website, go to fantasyteamadvisors.com. Sign up today. Give us all the love and support we can get. Share the videos. Like the videos. I do have a question. If we made merch like shirts or hats that was like bringing home the bacon um, or like a logo that I want to do, would that be something you guys would buy? Very curious um, because I've always wanted to do it. I just don't want to make it and no one buy anything. So I've been very curious. Um, Would love to make some shirts. And if if you guys do win some money using us, uh, we could give some shirts away and stuff like that too. So We'll talk about it in other videos, but yeah, definitely go check out all the other content we have at fantasyteamadvisors.com and get ready for some NFL content in the near future. So good luck on this slate, everybody. Let's bring home some bacon. Peace!